Hey everyone, we're Tom and Bunny from TomandBunny.com and we do videos on the pineapple world, what we see on Facebook trending, travel, and club tours. Mm -hmm. And we work for Tom's Trips, your leader in adult lifestyle vacations with destinations all around the world. And if you want an adult-only vacation with a lot of extracurricular, Give us a call at 800-285-0853 and Bunny can get you booked, but she can also answer all your questions. Yes, legitimate questions. Legitimate questions, <laughs> not the pervy, creepy questions. <laughs> so, anyway, today we're going to be talking about finding your people. Yes, because you know what? I'm just going to throw this right out there right now. You know, a lot of people talk, oh, I went to that club and they were clicky. Well. Or I went to that club and didn't have a good time. I'm never mm -hmm. going back. Right. So, you know, it's all about finding your people. And, and it's not that you're not going to find your people the first time you go out. No. I mean, some people do. Mm -hmm. But for the majority, when people go to a new venue... Uh, and it, it happens at travel, and it happens at clubs or hotel takeovers, house parties. It kind of happens a little everywhere. House parties are a little easier because they're a lot smaller, more confined. And a little them, more intimate. You can more have more intimate. conversations with more people. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, where a house party might have 10 or 20 couples, a club could have anywhere from 40 to 300 couples. Mm -hmm. A hotel takeover can have almost a thousand. Um, not and then, more. What? If not more. If not more. Um, yeah, Nadia and Nolan, they get 2,500 people, I, mm -hmm. I think. And then you got places like Desire and Hedonism. Um, on average, there's about 600 people at Hedonism. And so it can be a little intimidating. It can. It really can. And, and you know, it, if you're shy, I, I mean, we get it. We understand people are shy. They don't like to be out open so much. But in this world, you have to be. People, you know, people will come up to you and talk to you. But if you um, are shy and you're sitting in a corner all by yourself and you have that don't mess with me look, the rest and be look. No one's going to no one's going to approach you. So yeah, you have to be outwards and um, looking like you're having a good time yourself for people to even approach you. Exactly. So yeah, yeah I mean, when me and Bunny will go to a club for the first time, we typically don't want to sit in chairs or at a table. We want to be able to walk around the room and actually say hi to people. And just by saying, hi, how are you doing? You having a good night? Can develop into a full-blown conversation. But the more people you meet, the better time you'll have eventually. But we also say, don't take opinions from others. It's good to listen to opinions and kind of file it in the back of your head. Mm -hmm. But don't let that be the only thing that determines your good time or not. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, it, and it really all depends on what you're looking for because there's, uh, I'm going to talk about one club in particular. They do a, they do quite a bit of um, fetish night on a Friday. So if you're looking for fetish or you, you know, you like those type of people, that's the night that you're going to want to go. And then if you go on Saturday, it's a big mix of everybody else. Uh, so we kind of search out what you like. If you like bi couples, then you're going to want to find those type of parties or those type of events at Hedonism. <laughs> right. <laughs> shameless plug. That's shameless plug. <laughs> but, we, we do a bi week at Hedonism and it sells out and six months before the event and people are begging us for rooms. So it's not like we could build more rooms. And that's where this comes from because... All we kept hearing this past time was, I found my people. Yes, and that's I have found my people. why we did this video mm -hmm. is because we, 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 we acknowledge the, the disconnect between people and clubs and stuff like that. But when we started hearing, we found our people, we found our people, and I'm like, 
that is a great topic to talk about because you know at, at clubs like we have uh, just in the Nashville area we got the Red Room, we got Chemistry, we got Vibe, down in Knoxville there's Euros, and we, there's one in Huh? Uh, got tempted in Louisville. Tempted in Louisville. There's one in Birmingham. So they're all within a few hours from us. And we've been to the Red Room a one time with some friends, but we didn't get to meet the and membership. No, we did not because we were We with sat friends. at a table yeah. with our friends and we had a good time, but our purpose is we don't know we don't even know if that's our club yet. Mm -hmm. So we do want to go to the, the chemistry club and back to Red Room on our own. We want to go to Tempted and uh, Club Euros, and, mm -hmm. but we go to Vibe, and Vibe is our tribe. Yes, they are super. So we found our people at Vibe. Now some people say, I don't really like hotel takeovers. Well, then that's not your people. <laughs> they, they want something, like we met a couple the other day. They like house parties. Yeah. So they found their people and telling us what a great time at the house party. And yeah, we'd love to be invited to a house party. Maybe that'll be our people as well. You can have multiple people areas. Yeah, yeah. Any multiple friends. You know, a lot of people, Tom and I prefer to hang out with pineapple people, even in our vanilla world. In our vanilla world, just because we don't have to hide anything. And there's, you just have so much more in common with people. Uh, the pink, pineapple people seem to be more freeing, let things roll off of you. You know, just want to go out and have a good time. But sometimes in the vanilla world, people are just so focused on raising kids. You know, going to soccer, going to doing this, doing that, and they get wrapped up, and they're not as much fun to be around. No, and um, so yeah, we prefer to be around pineapple people, mm -hmm. uh, one thousand uh, percent. As I say, we could be, we would like to find people we can connect with for the benefit side. However, we could be friends and wingmen, wing women, with pretty much most any other couple. But there are exceptions to that. I'm not going to say every couple because obviously you, you're not friends with everyone you talk to. You, you could be acquaintances but you find your people and that's how you gravitate towards and hopefully you find people that have something in common with you. Exactly and you know your clubs and your hotel parties and everything they want you to find your people too. Yeah because you'll keep coming, <laughs> coming back. back. So, so at our our club, um, we we were I could I I was just telling someone the other day, our club was in existence forty two years. Me and Bunny ran it for twenty years, and it closed three years later due to or something like that after we left um, because of COVID and everything. But we are we we set up a lot of things to make our club were people would feel like they found their people mm -hmm. before we knew that mm -hmm. term. Yep. And we would, uh, when you come into our club, you're new, you're nervous, you're scared. Well, we'd have about, I don't know, four to six uh, couples that would give tours. And we'd like the couples to give tours as a couple to the other couple, so that way it's male, female, and they're not just a male walking a couple around who wants nothing to do with single men which is a fact of life um, and then they would answer all their questions make them feel warm and fuzzy and then I tell the all my tour guides in a couple of hours go back go up to the dance area and if you see the couple that you gave a tour to sitting by themselves go re-engage with them go up there and say, ask them if they're having a good time Offer to introduce them to your friends because you come here all the time mm -hmm. and you know everybody. And the chances are those people had a high prob probability of coming back because now they know at least one more couple. Exactly. The, yes. the tour guides. Mm -hmm. yes. And then it starts with one couple and it just, they start introducing you to their friends and then their friends and pretty soon you're the most popular couple at the club because you know everybody. Mm -hmm. Now another thing that me and Bunny would do to try to get people to find their people, um, we would do motorcycle 
events. Uh, when I say events, we would just decide we're going to ride down to the beach today. We would put an evite out to uh, our pineapple people. Yeah. And it started off with 15 bikes. And we would go riding around and go get lunch, go to bar hopping. And it evolved into about 400 bikes. Now, not all at the same time, but my evite was 400 couples from our club. Yes. And so they would join us. They could either meet us when we started the ride or meet us along the route. I would, I would tell everyone where we're going to be, how long we're going to be there, when kickstands are up and we're leaving. We would have photographers riding up and down to get everyone's pictures. We didn't share those pictures. The people got their own pictures and it just made for a lot of camaraderie. Mm -hmm. um, and then tying it, let me start over. <laughs> kind of switching subjects too. She was biting at the bit to get her words in. I was, I was. I kept talking. He does, he dominates. I do dominate. Tell you. But, um, don't, don't really, I mean, you can listen to other people, but don't go to a club because people tell you, don't go there. You're not going to like it. Don't go there. How do you know? Yeah. How do you know that you're not going to like that club? How do you know that you're not going to like the house party? Unless you go for yourself. There are many types of clubs. There are small, tiny clubs that really, they don't have DJs. They'll have background iPod music or now... Um, Spotify music, yeah. but they'll they'll have some background music. They might have a pizza or something just to give people some um, energy. But the, you go there for the extracurricular. They don't care how you dress or anything. And then they got club house parties that are they might some have DJs, some don't. Some have potlucks, some supply food, some yeah. don't. And then you got clubs like. The Red Room, our RO club, that are physical locations and they bring in all the lighting, the DJs, the bartenders, and they make it they make it like a nightclub experience for our type of environment. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the hotel parties and then you get the resorts all over the world and cruises. So there are all kinds of different avenues. There are clubs that, like I said, that they don't care how you dress, and then there are clubs that have a very strict dress code. Yes, yeah. So, um, like we say, what you like versus what Tom and I might li might like are going to be completely different. Um, you know, we like your average everyday Joe, but we also want them to be dressed appropriately. We don't. We don't want to go to we a like club. We like the middle of the road. Yeah, we don't want to go to a club where they're wearing sweatpants and. Um, like they just got off the couch. We don't even know yeah. if they took a shower. <laughs> right there, but you know, so we like to go out. We like to be dressed up. We like to see other people dressed up too. But you know, we don't also don't want to go to a club where. Um, it's a fashion show. Yeah, or if you, yeah, exactly. No, that's what it's like. Is um, the 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 accessories to the designer clothes to the car they drove in on. Well, well uh, just I just put it right I, there. I, I, we are, and those clubs are fine. Yeah, we're They're, we're middle normal. class Americans, so when we walk into a club like that, we know we're not going to fit in because we are not at their social level. Correct. Um, we. We don't wear, I, I can't wear hats because my hair ain't, but we just, I mean, right now, just in a polo shirt and everything, yeah. but I always wear a button down shirt. Bunny always wears a dress, um, and she always sometimes bring two or three outfit changes throughout mm -hmm. the night. Yep. And then if we're going to play, then there's another outfit for that, so she doesn't have to have all of her clothes with her. Correct. Um, we, I, I kind of like the more, not hole in the wall, but more like the sawdust. I call it the sawdust bar. Yes. Um, where there are people wearing baseball caps, there's people wearing t-shirts, but there are people wearing um, slacks, suit coats and ties and uh, nice skit tight dresses. And a big, 
we like a big mix of everybody. Yes, and we like all ages, everything from 21 to 80 in a club. We don't want to go into a club that's nothing but 21 year olds. Mm -mm. And we don't want to go into a club that's all, and no offense, 80 year olds. Uh, eventually we'll be at that point. <laughs> but right now, we're in the 45 to 55 range. Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. Or should I say 45 to 65? 45 to 65, yeah. Okay. Let's extend that out a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we were in the 35 to 45 range for a long time. So it, it, we, we progress as our ages progress. And we know that we are not the desired couple. So therefore, we're not going to a club that decreases our odds. No, no. We're not going to go to a club where everybody in there is, um, a, every woman is a size five or below and they, and they obviously work out and take care of themselves because we're we just don't. not going to fit in. <laughs> this is our workout. <laughs> right here. <laughs> so it, finding your people, once you find your people, it's uh, it, it's it's a game changer. It's a game changer. Uh, unfortunately, you walk into a club and you go, "Oh my God, this club is so clicky." And unfortunately, our club would be called clicky at times. And I'd be like, "What are you talking about? Let me go look." And then I kind of rationalized it to this: everybody in that club was new. Every single couple that walked in the club, club walked in as a new couple. And most of them at our club were new to the pineapple world, mm -hmm. um, their first experience. They became friends with a lot of people, they found their people, and they forgot that there are new people like you walking through the door. And we did have one couple, and we ended up comping them. So, because they did right. They made their table right at the entrance to the nightclub. They were, a well-to-do couple mm -hmm. they dress to the nines um, she always had skin tight dress a beautiful girl he was a good-looking guy always wore the um, suit kind suit coat but no tie and yeah. more of a relaxed casual look mm -hmm. and they always had high-end tequilas and different drinks and as people would walk by it didn't matter if they were um, their friends people that have been coming for a while that they didn't even really know but more importantly new people as they'd see the tours come by and they didn't cherry pick the couples that they wanted to play with they invited every single new couple. hey when you get done with your tour come back over we'll give you your first drink and after i watched that for a while and i thought to myself i gotta comp this couple because they're spending hundred dollars a bottle on their alcohol because they mm -hmm. got the really good stuff they're here right when we open they're here until two in the morning they're talking to everybody and if they're engaging with my guest that well and they're introducing those new couples to their friends and as people are walking by they're like, hey let me introduce you to tom and bunny over here this yeah. is their first time here that you can't buy that you can't you can't that is their personal demeanor. I never had to even comp them. They would have done it. They did do it without any compensation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just because they were, you know, they just loved to meet people. They were friendly. They were outgoing. And uh, people just gravitated to them. And, I mean, it's not something you can really work on. It's just something that you have. Now, I'm sure there's people from our club watching the video and they know exactly who we're talking about and they're yeah. probably going to make a phone call <laughs> and go, you were on their video. <laughs> Can I say it? Can I No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't because... Um, I wasn't going to say a name. Huh? I wasn't going to say a name. I was going to say a phrase. Oh, you can say the phrase. Yay, yay. Yay, yay. <laughs> <laughs> but... Yeah, um, we don't want to give up names because we don't want anyone to Good get Lord, hurt Good Lord, I wasn't going to say a name now. <laughs> so if you know who Yay Yay is, uh, don't drop their name in the comment, no. but just type Yay Yay to acknowledge that you know <laughs> who Yay Yay is. But yeah, if you have a club 
and you're wondering why you're not getting a lot of repeat. You're getting the same people, but you're new. You're you're you're, you're having a high turnover of new people. Mm -hmm. Think about how to engage those people. Giving them a tour is a great start. Most clubs all give a tour of their club. But do you engage those people after that tour? Really? I mean, just be honest with yourself. And if the answer is no, that's probably your number one issue. Mm -hmm. You've got to, yeah, you've got to figure out how to retain your new couples. I mean, the Corral in Spring Grove, Pennsylvania, they do a lot of member kind of give back events. Yes. Uh -huh. And therefore they create a camaraderie and lifelong friends with their members. Well, one of our biggest events was every Labor Day and every Memorial Day, they would do a huge barbecue. We yeah. would open um, an hour early and uh, we would have volunteers, we'd come out and barbecue. I mean, we're not talking hamburgers. We're talk yeah, we had hamburgers, hot dogs, we had ribs, yeah. steak, shrimp. Yep. And <laughs> and it was huge. And, you we know, had that eight was, barbecues going. And that was just a big give back to, to the members. And it just created so much camaraderie and people look forward to that holiday every year, yeah. twice a year. And, that, and of course the club charged for that, but what me and Bunny would do is Super Bowl Sunday was our give back to the community mm -hmm. and we would do a potluck. We did not charge for entry into the club at all. And we, all we asked you to do was bring uh, a dish that you're famous for and stuff like that. A dish of substance. A dish of substance. And my God, we would have four, five, six, six foot tables lined up full of foods and everyone loved that. Yeah. And then eventually we ended up having to start charging because the owner said we were losing money. And I said, <laughs> we're not losing money. These people are gonna come back every weekend because we're not gouging every dime out of them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. So we gotta have to cut this short, but yeah, this is our take about finding your people. Tell us in the comments below, how do you find your people and how should other people find their people? Give recommendations. If this is just our opinion. Mm -hmm. It means nothing. We just like to talk on camera. Well, yes. <laughs> and some of us talk a lot more than the other. I do talk a lot. <laughs> I'm Sir Talk a lot. Sir Talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> talk a lot. <laughs> so, anyway. If you have any um, questions about travel, to hedonism, desire, or the cruises, definitely give Bunny a call, 800-285-0853. This is how we're able to do these videos and podcasts, so support us by going on a trip. Mm -hmm. A well-deserved trip that you deserve and find your people. And call me, because even if, even if we don't have a group there, I can still book you. Yes. But yeah, please give us a call and uh, we will see you soon. We'll see you soon.